Welcome everyone to the Sunday Rune and Card Readings. I'm actually recording this on the day before, Saturday. I will edit and get it posted for Sunday. I always post um, a set of readings every Sunday, but I wanted to record these on the day of the full moon. Um, we have the full moon in Virgo. Now, if you're already subscribed to this amazing channel, um, this amazing community really, um, thank you so, so much guys. You are just awesome. You will have got notification yesterday when I upload did um, a video where I was making astrology stones. Um, I was really called to make these for, this, for these readings very specifically and I sort of started to get ready to make them and then thought I might as well make a video and share these and see if any of you guys are you know interested in doing the same for yourselves. So today we're going to be using not just runes and several sets of cards but we are also going to use astrology stones as well. Um, I'll stick a link at the end of the readings, or I may even upload the actual video again connected to these in case you want to have a look at it and um, check in there because, you know, we don't have to go off and, you know, buy endless stuff to enhance our readings. There are so many avenues and channels that we can tap into and actually make for ourselves, tune into for ourselves. So um, without further ado, first of all, um, welcome everyone. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, very, very powerful full moon, um, especially given the kind of the astrological collaborations and connections that are going on at the moment. If you're interested in getting updates about the astro stuff, I post um, on Facebook on our A to Z of Emotional Health Facebook page. Guys, what I'll do, I'll put a link to the Facebook page in the information box below. Um, and I'll also put it in the comments along with the timestamps. So if you've looked at the thumbnail and you already know which of the readings today is speaking to you, um, you can fast forward straight to those. And also I will put the link for our subscriber draw. Now each month I offer a free private reading. I give away a pack, I should be able to bring that up on the screen. I give away a pack of the Art of Manifestation Oracle Cards. It's a signed first edition pack. Um, it's, I also give away a free private reading. It's a subscriber offer, so you need to be subscribed and join our subscriber email list. I will put the link to that in the box as well. And I can't think of anything else I need to say before I do this beyond just welcome and thank you. Guys, you're awesome. Thank you so much for your likes, your shares, your comments, and any of you that are making your own astrology stones, um, do message them through to me because I'd love to post pictures. Um, you can't post onto the A to Z Facebook page directly and we don't, we have something obviously as a form of protection there um, so that people can't just post anything. But if you send them through, if you private message them through to me, I will be able to then download them. Um, it would be really lovely to share them. When we did the rune making workshop um, in 2020 last year, I did a lot of um, online webinars and um, you know obviously we were all in lockdown um, and that's what kind of started it. The rune making one was fabulous and you guys the runes that you made the photos you sent through were just absolutely fantastic so thank you and do send through anything that you do with the astrology stones as well. It will be really lovely to share them and post them. So let's put these back into this little bag. And let's tune in to the energy of this very powerful full moon in Virgo. Now we've been through a big astrological period of intensity. Thank you those of you who joined me in the collective prayer as well. And what we might expect in the energy of this full moon, and I suspect it will be present in these readings, is potential illumination, potential insights and awareness as to almost like the pragmatic, the next pragmatic step on your journey of manifestation. Now that could be, if you're manifesting a relationship, it might be your next step in that process. If you are manifesting a, a new career pathway, it could, be, it could be the next step on that. One way or the other, these readings are going to be, I think, about illumination of some aspect of your personal journey in terms of what you can do next in order to um, increase the power and potential of your manifestation. So that's kind of what's coming through today. Um, very interesting, I was really drawn as well to have some calcites. These are all calcites of different varieties. 
Calcites are real healers. Um, they bring us so many different attributes, but always with an undertone of healing. So, and um, plus the, the sweet grass, which literally attracts positivity. So very much, very, very special readings today and a very, very interesting energy. I imagine, and you guys are very intuitive. I know listening to your comments, um, I imagine you're tuning into this energy yourselves already. So before we go any further, let us, I'm actually going to, I'm going to draw from the runes first. Now, normally we give guidance as to the way that the readings are moving forwards. But today, because I'm going to draw astrology stones as well, I think we're going to draw them, we'll draw the runes first actually. I know a lot of you like to listen to the extra guidance, but I, I don't think we're going to have that in the same way today. I think we're just going to draw the stones. We'll see which way up they come as they come out of the bag. With the runes, we can produce them and turn them over the right way up. Let's see where the astrology stones take us. I'm, I'm really just going to move into that space of allowing and see what unfolds. So reading number one, we're going to have two runes per reading. And this is here. Reading number two. And reading number three. Now, we'll move those to one side and we're now going to tune into the astrology stones. Now, I don't know which way up these are going to come. Um, with a rune, I can, you know, make sure it comes out so that you don't see it. With the astrology stones, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I don't know which way out they're going to come. We're just going to go with this. We're going to see whether any guidance is offered if they come in an, in an open position. And I, I like to think of the, if we think of the planets as... I don't know, teachers, guides, um, guardians of archetypal knowledge. So in many ways, when they connect and collaborate, whether those are challenging collaborations or flowing ones, I mean, that's what astrology is all about. It gives us a roadmap. It's like an energetic roadmap. So let's see, let's just go with this and see what we're showing. Okay, this has come out in a, in a closed position. And this has come out in an open position. And this has come out in a closed position. This is fascinating. I'm rather enjoying this. So I, I am going to say to you, I don't know. I have no idea what stone is governing reading number one or reading number three at this point. But I do know reading number two is governed by Saturn in retrograde. Now, Saturn is... Gosh, Father Karma, Father Time. Um, he brings us some very powerful life lessons. Um, I've just realized I've left the Art of Manifestation cards up on the screen. Let me move that out of our way. Now, Saturn in retrograde, reading number two, very powerful life lessons, but there's a lot of reflection going on here. When Saturn is in retrograde, I always feel we are asked to really, really think deeply. It's almost like a combination of, I would say, the rune of gateway and the card of justice. If you had the two together, um, you know, justice being a, a serious summing up, you're weighing something up, you're really considering something, and it's big, it's like a big move, whether you're buying a house or you're you know, embarking on a new phase of life in some way, there's something you're considering that is, it's significant. That would be my, my summing up of, my summing up of this particular stone, Saturn in retrograde. It, it's almost as though as well, there could be a karmic influence here. So there's some aspect of your journey, something quite pivotal is taking place and you are needing to weigh it up and see where it goes. I'm actually going to turn these over. That's what I'm really hearing. We do need the guidance for the readings. So this is interesting. We have another retrograde and um, this is Neptune in retrograde. Now, Neptune in retrograde 
if we I mean talk about stepping into the dream time Neptune is a is a planet that brings us illumination and very powerful spiritual connections however for me Neptune energy I mean I have a lot of fire in my chart so um, so watery energy can sometimes be harder for me to manage it's very powerful um, and I always think Neptune energy when it comes in it's like waves on a shore that you know they can gently be lapping at your feet and the next minute you get a wave that feels like it's the size of a tsunami and you know your world is floating around you now Neptune in retrograde for me this is like <clears throat> it's like diving into the dream time it's you know that's that wonderful saying when in deep water become a diver but recognizing that that is a space of illumination it's a space of discovery it's really interesting the energy of this reading number one that's coming through we haven't even drawn our cards yet but the energy of just this powerful little stone this symbol um, I feel like I'm swimming underwater and yet with wonder it's it's like a coral reef it's quite interesting what I'm seeing it's like a coral reef I, I'm diving into somewhere where there is so much new territory to be discovered uh, I, I feel in wonder in awe um, at the enormity of of what I am able to see in terms of scope and possibility and potential harmony as well there's something really being opened up here in reading number one in terms of that illumination it's probably enhanced by the fact that today is the day of the full moon very interesting combination actually that flow of energy from being in that space of massive dream time um, illumination and then the Saturn retrograde considering what practical steps to take <laughs> these these are so in tune with them um, the full moon in Virgo let's see what our last stone is about we actually it's interesting we've got retrograde planets so much reflection and illumination required I always think if we are able to on the day of a full moon if you're able to stop we can't always sometimes we've got a full-on day at work but if you can stop and create some space carve some space out on the day of the full moon always for meditation reflection we can be shown so much mercury in retrograde well um, most people know what mercury in retrograde is about um, it means that there are holdups delays um, things don't always run smoothly however there is always a bigger picture I think mercury in retrograde reminds us to step away from our human centric goal orientated perspectives in life you know the Western way of you have a goal you have a target you go for it and um, that's great there is a time and place for all of that but actually mercury in retrograde reminds us to slow down to stop and smell the roses and to consider that if there is a hold up or a delay that it is probably going to be providential we need to see something if there's a diversion we need to trust that that, that diversion is happening with purpose and that something we see along the route will be very important to us so there is something about receiving messages here in um, unusual ways receiving messages that are it's the synchronicity we can so easily dismiss something as being a, a hiccup or a hold up or an interruption to our plans this is suggesting that if there is an interruption to your plans or a delay trust lean into that space of trust and know that it is purposeful I often speak about um, the visitors to my garden and it's always interesting when we do when one arrives the most enormous crow has just arrived and landed um, literally just outside my window it's eating um, on bird table tossing through the seeds really interesting um, very very striking characteristics they have very individual looks now this I'm going to say man I think it's a definitely a he he is being really thorough about um, what he wants and what he doesn't he's tossing seeds aside I always oh my goodness me he's tossing seeds aside I'm just I'm just going to bring that into this reading number three the energy of crow and um, crow sits between the worlds crow journeys between the worlds and um, the crow can see beyond the obvious actually that they, they um, 
yes, they, they can sit in that space between. It's why, interestingly enough, um, the cover design this year for the um, Art of Manifestation um, Astro Moon Journal and Diary, we use the crow deliberately because this is a year that is a bit of a year in between. We're, we're moving into a new age, the age of Aquarius, and this year is all about um, that shift from the way things were to the way things can be. So very powerful year astrologically, very powerful year for all of us as a global collective humanity, you know, individually as well, of course. So I'm talking a lot, so I'm going to move on to um, to our cards now. But yeah, very strong guidance from these astrology stones. I'm very, very pleased I was drawn to make them. I will no doubt use them again in our readings. So let's draw from, um, we'll draw from the Light Seers Tarot, becoming increasingly fond of these cards. I'm going to draw from two tarot packs today, the Light Seers and the Mythic Tarot as well. We're going to have two cards. We are then going to draw from the Mythic Tarot. Just one. We are going to draw from the Art of Manifestation cards. Oh, and I'm hearing a, a spirit animal guide as well. These are leaping out for us today. Oh, absolutely, there we are. Lovely. And a spirit animal guide as well. Hmm. Actually, that's it. That's that's where we are. Wonderful friends. Um, I will suggest now um, lean into whichever reading is speaking to you. Sometimes it's more than one. I know some people will watch one or two or all three. Um, sometimes people come back later in the week and watch them again and they find they were drawn to, you know, reading number one at the beginning of, of, of the day and then, you know, three days later they have a feeling it's a different reading. Tune into your own intuition, open yourselves to illumination, um, trust that especially in the light of the moon at her fullest, um, that you will be shown the guidance you need. Wonderful friends, do pause the video if you need to. The timings, of course, are in the information box and I'll put them in the comments. Thank you again for joining me. So, so much love to you all. Namaste. Welcome to reading number one. So we have our little astrology stone, Neptune in retrograde, um, which feels, it felt very powerful when we were first talking about them, um, tuning into something at real depth. Um, there's a wonder and an awe, and yet, you know, that there's quite an enormity around as well. Let's have a look at our runes. So we have the rune of Burkana, growth. Um, this is lovely, it's a rune that is, um, it's it's about new beginnings, a whole new phase in life. This is um, symbolized by the birch tree, which is, you know, if there's a forest fire, a birch tree is the first tree to sort of seed itself. It's, it's regeneration. Um, I want to say regeneration at a cellular level in a way. There's something that's emerging here, though I would say taking its time, hence the retrograde energy here of Neptune. Maybe you're needing to see something before moving forwards. Burkana um, speaks of um, sort of, I would say, persistent growth, really. It's steady growth. It leads to fertility, but it's the beginning of a new phase of something. Um, we also have the rune of the spiritual warrior, but it's in reverse, which is really interesting because the, the rune of the warrior actually speaks to us of um, sort of discernment, really. It, it asks us to be really thoughtful about our actions. And um, sometimes it can mean that we're needing to remove aspects or, or remove something within ourselves or within our lives. We're, we're needing to be discerning and we're needing to be thoughtful and careful about our decisions. It's walking that pathway of the spiritual warrior. In reverse, it tends to advise against hasty action. 
you know, don't act too quickly. So it's quite interesting because Bacana also speaks of patience. You know, a forest doesn't grow overnight, you know, but nevertheless, an acorn contains the vast potential of, of you know, an incredible oak tree, all within that one, that one, that one little shell. So let's look at our cards. Okay, so we have, this is interesting. So we have Nine of Swords, Page of Swords. We have the Tower. Mm, wow. Have your voice and truth transcends illusion. These are powerful, this is a powerful collection of cards. Now I'm gonna put them bang in the middle here. Okay, and move our runes down. Right, I know some people were saying in last week's um, readings that the camera shifts around a little bit. Um, apparently that may be, it, it's sort of focusing around the cloth, but I, anyway, my apologies if that is happening. I hope not this week. I'll try not to move the cards around too much because I think that probably causes something of it. So firstly, have your voice. Is there something you need to say? An inability to speak out can leave us with feelings of hurt and resentment, which then create a kind of internal energetic roadblock. Voice your feelings to yourself or write them down. It is time to release the past. Releasing the past is important here in some way. You are emerging from something. You're coming out of something. You are literally in a position to rebuild. It's like starting from scratch in some way. Something is something very big is happening around you now. It's full of potential. I literally felt like I had dived into some amazing coral reef and this entire, you know, new world that I had never witnessed before was was laid out in front of me, just tuning into the Neptune retrograde energy. Enter the dream space. Enter the dream time. Don't be rushing into something. Take your time. Now, if you have been connected to a circumstance or someone where you didn't have a voice, you know, sometimes we have to, um, what's coming through is choose your battles. Again, the spiritual warrior knows, the spiritual warrior knows when to act, when not to. You know, they take their time in evaluating, they choose their battles, okay? There is very little point in trying to speak to someone who can't hear you you know so do you know what's coming through here is gaslighting you know i don't know if any of you have are in that you've had an experience of that you're coming through it you're coming out the other side of it it's around you again neptune energy very very sometimes very confusing sometimes we can't see clearly with neptune it doesn't mean we won't be um, seeing clearly. The energy of Neptune, it, it brings us illumination, but sometimes it's, it can feel so overwhelming. It, it just means that we can't quite, we can't see with clarity. Again, in retrograde, the, the whole seascape is, is slowed down. If you are around someone who cannot hear you, I want to say don't waste your energy trying to torture them. This is the discernment. Um, and, and don't take hasty actions. Don't be reactive because somebody might be provoking you into a reactive position. Somebody might be almost, you know, fueled by their own agenda. They, they could be slightly pulling the wool over your eyes. Have your voice, write your feelings down. That will give you clarity. You don't have to share them with somebody who isn't going to be mindful of the way you feel. If somebody, if you try to talk to someone about your feelings and, and they just throw it back at you and do the sort of, you know, well, what about me? Or you're not, you know, you're not looking after me stuff. Actually just, you know, move away from that. Don't be overburdened by the worry of this. The situation you're in is actually creating a new opening and that new opening is full of promise. It, the the um, Burkana rune, it, it's a rune of growth and fertility, but it does ask us to gently um, remove any resistances to that growth. Now, for some of you, there may be a pattern in your world where you didn't have a voice or you haven't felt able to have a voice or you couldn't challenge or you weren't allowed to challenge. There's something going on here whereby you're needing to let go of that pattern, remove resistances to your own possibilities. Page of Swords, it's very interesting. This for me is like a light bulb card. Um, you know, it, it can say you're needing to move beyond something. You may need to learn some new skills. Pathways are opening up for you. Truth transcends illusion. Now we have this wonderful dragonfly spirit card here. 
Truth transcends illusion. Remember that I, I do feel gaslighting keeps coming through. I feel like some of you have literally been gaslighted. You've been almost bulldozed um, in a sort of an, a below the belt, underhanded kind of way. You've been bulldozed into something. Um, you know, Page of Swords, not so much in this pack, I feel, but in some packs, it's very much the card of gossip and drama. You know, that sort of, you know, the kind of people I'm talking about who create crisis all around them. They, 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 they fuel it, they feed on it, they thrive on it. There's something of that that you have had to endure and it's left a lot of worry and a lot of concern. But this is time for a new beginning. You know, out of the, I always think the tower. Yes, you know, big changes are afoot when we draw the card of the tower. However, amidst that Amidst those changes, there is the potential for the new to grow. And it's not just, um, it's the new emerging from the old as well. It's, it's like, for me, the tower is like the ultimate card of, of the recycler. You know, you, you take some old materials and you, you transform them into something beautiful and new. You know, you take something, it's like you take a pile of rubble where something fell down and you build the most exquisite building. Um, it, it's, or the most exquisite sculpture. It, it's, there's something about this, this is regeneration really regeneration at a cellular level um wonderful wonderful connection to I, I love the rune i sometimes play with the energy i'm not turning this rune into an upright position sometimes if a rune is in a reverse position or a card is i will play with the energy and, and we'll shift the energy within the reading we'll see what needs to be done actually this rune is cautioning it's saying you know dive deep and um, look at the seascape look at what's below the surface truth transcends illusion allow yourself to see what is below the surface don't worry and don't get embroiled in the the drama bit that, that is apparent that's not real um, the realness is the avenue and the opening and the illumination that comes from seeing the truth of something and of allowing yourself to move beyond that this does not have to limit you discernment remember the key is discernment don't take hasty actions because if you do it may be because you've been almost slightly pushed to do that again the gaslighting word is coming through again and again so just guys um take it steady remain grounded allow yourself to dive deep in order to see what sits at the root of the matter and from that root um, you will emerge you are going to be making some choices but don't make them hastily just take your time and um, bide your time keep yourself to yourself um, voice your feelings to yourself or write them down um, it's time to move on from something um, in part, that will be moving on. For some of you, it will be moving on from some perspective that a situation has left with you. For some of you, this is very real, very immediate, very here and now. You are needing to see something with clarity, move beyond it, not have the wall pulled over your eyes. Um, I think you know that at a core level. There, there's like a, it's quite interesting, I'm feeling this sort of gut feeling, literally in my solar plexus. There's something you actually know, but somebody is very good at trying to sort of um, yeah, trying to make you see it from their perspective. You need to see it from your own. It's really clear. And, and I want to say your own perspective. Truth transcends illusion here. Um, wonderful people, strength, courage, um, perseverance. I feel like I want to bring in another little crystal here, actually. I'm just going to, excuse me, leaning across the reading, but I want to bring in this little piece of tiger eye here. It's going to bring that in here. It's lovely energy. Tiger eye is... It's a stone of protection. Um, it's a stone that it brings good luck to the wearer. Um, there's something about tiger eye that helps us to see the truth of the matter. When I meditate, I often med I have a tiger eye angel. And when I meditate, I, if I sit with the tiger eye angel, it's really interesting. I find that the answers come to me quite clearly. I gain that clar clarity. I mean, for me, tiger eye, again, it's the stone of the spiritual warrior. Um, for me, it's the stone of 2021 with so much upheaval going on. It's, some, it's a stone I call upon and sit with um, a great deal at the moment and um, just wanting to see to, to see that bigger picture and yet also to be able to connect to clear decision making on my own pathway 
wonderful friends. Um, thank you so, so much for joining me. Big respect to you because what you're kind of dealing with here is the kind of stuff that is, it's the lower energetic of humanity. Humanity, we're not always the best of species, let's face it. And yet we can be, you know, we can be incredible. And this is about you processing a situation and holding that pathway of the spiritual warrior, but doing it in a very deeply personal way. This isn't a public thing, this is a very deeply personal process. But as you align yourself with the higher energetic, um, you become a beacon of light for others to do the same. Um, you know, we lead by example. So there's something very powerful about your, your personal evolution here and also your input to the collective, yeah, the collective raising of consciousness within humanity because um, when we each do this level of work and um, we are contributing to the greater collective and to the greater consciousness of the greater collective. So big respect to you all and so much love. Namaste. Welcome to reading number two. So we have our sort of governing energy of, of Saturn in retrograde, big life lessons. I know I said at the beginning for me, this is sort of something like the card of justice um, and the rune of gateway. You know, you're pondering something, considering something. So um, your first rune is the rune of wholeness. Um, this is the path you must follow. It would suggest there is one way to go. Um, you need to walk that pathway. There is only one direction to go in here. Interesting. Followed by the rune of constraint. Now this is also curious because you know, in one way I'm seeing a very direct pathway. In another way there is some restriction, some energy of restriction around you. Sometimes the rune of constraint, it's not saying we can't move forwards. If there is restriction around you, again maybe there is purpose to this. It's more connected to it's pay attention to the details. Um, you know, when fishermen can't go to sea, they mend their nets. There's something about paying attention to some details, not just rushing to something. It doesn't mean you don't move forwards. There's just something to be evaluated, something to learn here. So we have Eight of Wands, we have the card of Temperance, we have the card of the Devil. Do you know, this is just, this is quite a contradiction. Again, these, these two energies are quite a contradiction. In one way, we've got the path you must follow, and I am seeing a direct pathway, and yet you are needing to attend to something along the way. We have antelope spirit. Life is speeding up. Wonderful. Simultaneously, we have take your time, slow down. If you're feeling under pressure, whether in response to a situation or the demands of another person, or from pressure that you are placing on yourself. This card asks you to slow down and take time to evaluate before reaching a conclusion, making a decision or committing yourself. Saturn um, in retrograde. It's this space of evaluation. It's quite interesting. What just came through there was Saturn return as well. You know, for those of you that are into astrology, well, our Saturn returns come um, approximately every 28 to 30 years in our lives, where Saturn has moved from the position it was at our birth all the way around and, and returns to, its, to, to that same position. And it's always a time of evaluation. Um, it's not a negative evaluation, um, but it is a time of big evaluation. There's something about this. Now, life is speeding up. Again, Eight of Wands is a card that speaks of taking action, of go, 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 um, knowing the direction you're going in. And yet, you know, this pathway of, of wholeness. And yet temperance asks us to evaluate, to consider, to weigh things up, to, to balance, um, to balance the sort of divine masculine and divine feminine within us each. So I, I feel like there's this really peculiar energy um, around wanting something to move forwards and yet you're needing to attend to some details. Um, I, what's coming through in terms of manifestation is clarity. 
that's what I'm being shown. It's clarity that you're needing. Um, take your time. Um, life will speed up. I feel like you're in this pivotal space where a doorway is opening for you and I think you know it but in terms of manifestation yes actions are needed and yes it is time to take action in your pathway of manifestation this reading is literally a request to be very very clear about what you want it's it's literally saying to you get down to the finite detail yeah when fishermen can't go to sea they mend their nets today is the day of the full moon in Virgo. Now, for anyone who has a vision board, um, I would suggest go back to your vision board and tweak it, yeah? Attend to the finite details. If you are able to, and, and you can do so, you know, in this energy of the full moon, you can do so for several days yet, very much in that space. In fact, you could make that this next month's sort of lunar cycle for you um, until we get to the next full moon. You could, if you, if you work, if you are familiar with working with the um, lunar cycles in terms of manifestation, you will know that there's a natural flow of energy where we, we are shown things and we process what we're shown, we invest in our new moon wishes, and you know, there is a natural sort of cycle within the lunar cycles, the natural flow of energy that really, really embodies the process of manifestation. It's why I, I wrote the Art of Manifestation diary and, and journal. Diary, the diary really shows you that. Now, yes, it's time to go, but it's kind of at each stage of go, you're being asked to stop and evaluate simultaneously. You know, there will be a big opening, but you're being, you're being shown details on your pathway of manifestation. So if you are calling in a new career pathway or you're tuning into your purpose or your calling, if you feel as though, for example, I'm using a hypothetical example, but if you were, if you thought your calling was to become, let's say, a therapist or a counsellor, Yes, that's quite a big blanket, actually, in its own way. It's a big umbrella. There are, you know, numerous modalities within that. Um, this reading is saying, yes, you're on the right path. This is the path to go. This is the pathway of wholeness. This is your calling. What you now need to do is to do that research into those different modalities and find out exactly the right course for yourself and exactly the right um, What's your next pathway effectively? What's your what's the next step on your pathway? Um, life is speeding up. Doorways are opening for you. And yet take your time every step of the way. It's the same thing if you're doing a vision board, if you're calling in a soulmate, you know, and you've done a vision board and a, a, a kind of a list of the qualities that you're looking for in someone. Get finite about it. Be really, really clear. Work out, you know, those qualities of, of a person that would really align and resonate with you. So every aspect of your life, this feels like an invitation to create not just a, a vision board, but it's almost like if you had an umbrella vision board with all the kinds of things you like, it would be like they're making Bit like a family tree, um, you know, a, sort of like mini vision boards that step down from it that, that bring greater detail to your desires. Everything here is, you're on track, this reading is saying to me. Now let's just talk about the devil card here as well. The devil card, I think for me, is a card of liberation. The devil card um, yes, it, it, it can be interpreted in many ways. Um, it sometimes refers to an addiction. Um, that can be an addiction to, um, you know, not just something like a substance, but it could be an addiction to, you know, a, a thinking pattern or a way of being. It, it, it's an addiction to something, but it kind of says you can free yourself from that. The liberation here is to do with the detail. The liberation in this reading is to do with you being really clear about exactly what it is you desire in those finite details. I mean, we can never, if we're calling in a soulmate, wish for an exact person, but we can, ex we can wish for someone who has those qualities if there's someone we really like. It's like bringing it down to the fine detail. I think things are going to open up. Life is speeding up. But you are being advised here 
as I said, it feels quite paradoxical. It's like both speeding up, take your time, you know, slow down. But it, it is to do with um, not being swept along, but becoming um, the master of your manifestations, becoming the, it's like getting hold of the steering wheel and um, becoming the, um, it's not just, it's not a steering wheel, it's not really what I'm being shown. It's like more like a ship. It's kind of like taking up the navigation of the ship um, and actually getting hold of the wheel and deciding which directions you want to go in, in a much more finite way. It's taking charge of your manifestations um, in a very pragmatic, quite practical way, actually. Again, beautifully in alignment with this wonderful full moon energy in Virgo, where we can take pragmatic, practical actions and the illuminations of the full moon will often show us what to do. For you, it's like doorway opens, right, now let's evaluate, another doorway opens, let's evaluate. It's this process. It's, and it's all about liberation from any past issues, um, <coughs> excuse me, any past inner beliefs that have told you you can't have and I, you know, you can't have, I don't mean in an omnipotent kind of way. I'm, you know, those real finite details of, you know, you can't have this and that. Well, actually, maybe you can. Maybe you can have a life work balance that works for you. Maybe you can do a job you love and still balance, you know, family, relationships, friendships. Irrespective of the current circumstances, this is about you plotting, planning and moving towards um, the future that you genuinely wish to manifest. So life is speeding up, but also slow down and take your time. And whenever an opportunity is offered to you, evaluate it, look at it, cross the T's, dot the I's before you sign the contract. Um, and if it's not quite right, make those adjustments before you step through that gateway. Wonderful friends, this feels very empowering actually, but it feels like solid empowerment. Again, that's the Saturn energy. It's like you're actually building something that is a worthy structure for the future. It's like putting that time and effort into the planning stages the, of the house of your dreams. If you put in that time and effort into the planning and you build a solid foundation, you know, this this dream, this vision has substance for the future. And there's something about being on track. It's the pathway you must follow. So um, yeah, it feels very empowering. Yes, it's not moving forwards fast, but it sort of simultaneously is. Um, so yes, openings, take your time. Um, wow, is all I can say. Um, pretty epic and huge and liberating, but step by step. Wonderful friends, so, so much love to you on your journey. Namaste. Welcome to reading number three. We have the Mercury in retrograde. Um, astrology stone and our first rune is the rune of ice this is interesting because mercury in retrograde often causes us to have um things come to a standstill or there's a diversion or an interruption so ice very very interesting um and the rune of journey this is also fascinating because our journeys often go astray in periods of mercury in retrograde but there's always purpose to it it's interesting because the rune of ice speaks of the need to sort of remove resistances within us so that the ice melts and the flow begins. It's like we create the thaw. The rune of journey, um, I mean, sometimes it does indicate travel, but actually more often than not, it's journeying within and again, removing resistances. You know, within the rune of journey, we actually have the shape of the rune of joy. So it often indicates that the end of something is you know, something's coming at, at, to a completion in some way, but we just have to remove those last few resistances in order for the ice to melt and for the flow to return. If there is a delay around you in some way, trust it is providential. That's the Mercury retrograde. Now we have the hanged man, we have the emperor, we have the page of pentacles, new beginnings and clear out the clutter. Okay. Right, this is really quite a clear 
message really coming through here. I do feel like you're coming close to fruition in some way. There's something you would, you've been wanting to manifest, something you've been shifting, and suddenly there's this sort of Mercury retrograde energy around. You thought you were on track, you thought it was moving forwards. You need to see something differently or clear something away, clear out the clutter. The card of new beginnings is really powerful. This card indicates that you are about to begin a new chapter of your life. Shed, release and cleanse. Let go of any obstacles, inner or outer, that prevent you from engaging fully in moving forwards. The time is right for a fresh start and a new beginning. The universe supports you in your growth. Clear out the clutter. It's the same. Ice. Remove resistances within. The rune of journey. Remove any resistances within in order to move forward forwards. Trust that if there is a delay around you, it's actually showing you something. I feel like the energy of synchronicity is very much present and around you. Look out for signs. Look out for signs. Look out for symbols. Look out for unexpected conversations that take place. You are in a position where something is about to move forwards. The seeds you have previously sown are ready to burst forth. They just need a little bit more nurture and part of the nurturing is seeing something differently. If you are stopped in your tracks or something happened that was unexpected, it's allowing you to see something from a different perspective and to move forwards. The emperor is, I mean, it's the divine masculine, it's ambitions met, it, it's infinite possibilities. What do you want? What do you want to manifest? What do you want to bring into your world? And um, what do you want to create? Um, the hanged man. There's an aspect of, of also, for me, surrendering to the divine in this, you know, trusting, trusting that you are being shown something. If something didn't work out or didn't go through, then something of that pathway isn't right for you. Something needs, something around you needs to be shifted. And I feel like, it's really fascinating, I feel like I'm sitting in a bubble here. And as if, I feel like the universe has my back, which is really nice, there's like a strength. I almost feel like my back is, I'm straightening as I'm sitting here doing this reading. It's like I'm straightening, I'm feeling anchored, I'm feeling grounded. It's as if the universe is really, really supporting me, even though something, immediately in my world isn't moving forwards. That's what I feel, it's like I'm in a bubble here. It's a bubble of strength, there's a sense of determination, there's a sense of possibility, a sense of a new dawn coming. I, I'm literally seeing doorways opening in front of me and it's, it is, it's like a, and a sun rising, it's like French doors, you know those lovely, beautiful French doors in a building where it feels like an old building, it's not interesting. I'm feeling like I'm sitting in a very old building, beautiful, beautiful building, and these doors are opening to a new horizon. Very, very magical space, and yet I haven't yet walked through those doors. There is resistance to be moved or to see something from a different perspective. Something you are bringing forth is going to move into fruition, either energetically or in a very physical, pragmatic, real way, something needs to be removed. Now, I am going to play with the energy in this reading. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to play with the energy in this reading, and I'm going to play with the energy of this rune of ice. So let's just sit with this. Now, we know that there are doorways opening to new beginnings, new horizons. This card indicates that you are about to begin a new chapter of your life. The key here is shed, release, and cleanse clear out the clutter. Something within you needs to be, whether it's, it could, for some of you, it, it's literally physical stuff as well. It's kind of like energetically um, still clinging to stuff or holding on to stuff. You may not even know, being shown, you may not even know, it, know it's there. It's like I'm back in that room again with the doorways opening. And it's as if there's some stuff in that room that needs to be cleared out or let go of. Um, this is a story I shared not long ago in one of the readings, but it's coming through really clearly again. It was, um, I was reading a book by um, Catherine Woodward Thomas, love her writing, very, 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 very deeply aware lady. And she spoke of a story, she was counselling somebody who was 
wanting to bring in a new soulmate relationship and they got talking about the clutter in her house and it turned out that actually this lady um, still had all her divorce papers in a box under her bed and you know energetically it's sort of not possible to invite a new partner into your life if your divorce papers are still sitting under your bed something had to be cleared out and it's that kind of flavor it's the clearing of that that is going to be it's going to energetically something's still clinging around you it could be a someone or a something or literally some clutter in your house you need to spring clean you need to get the energy going you need to open the windows bring some you know some life back in whether you have to give yourself permission for some of you there's been a loss I'm being shown that for some of you there's been a loss and it's like you haven't yet quite been able to allow yourself to believe that you are entitled to move forwards and to move on um, and it's time to do that uh, I'm really saying that it's time to open those doors and to see that new horizon yes you are needing to see something differently now let's sit with this energy and let's just think about clearing out the clutter now I'm going to shift the cards here as well as the room so this is the reading as we have it laid out here we have the mercury retrograde energy now if we if we move this over here and I'm going to shift the cards along very different energy flow I can literally feel it shifting and we sit here and we say right we're going to clear out that clutter okay we're going to look at life through a different lens we are actually stepping into a place of the divine masculine we are going to move forwards we have that the healing of the calcite energy coming in here as well and um, you have already laid the ground here it's just you actually have to step through that door you're standing on a solid foundation it's more solid than you realize that's what I'm also being shown and I'm going to shift this rune the rune of ice because we create this flow of energy now I feel as though there is a kind of a flow and I'm going to bring this rune over here okay now, now I feel like I have because the journey is about to begin you've done the journeying within you've cleared the clutter you've listened to the delays to what's around you that needs to be attended to we shift this energy I feel like there's now a, a movement of energy forwards here like a, there's literally a flow taking place I can feel like a circular 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 <laughs> however you pronounce it a circular there's momentum here now something that did feel stuck is now moving forward so this is the energy in this particular reading something is being attended to whether you are spring cleaning whether you're spring cleaning your home yourself um, your head your heart <laughs> whatever you're spring cleaning it's time to clear that forwards and gosh temperature has just dropped in the room suddenly just as I said clear your heart again going back some of you have lost literally you have lost somebody um, that was a that was a tough call for some of you but the presence is here that every hair on my body is standing on end um, the message is really clear um, you know it's time to move forwards and um, happiness needs to be yours um, really really important here and um, whatever this is whether this whether this is ancestors supporting you in moving from a broken heart or somebody you've actually physically you have lost someone um, you need to give yourself permission to move forwards it's this is the right time to do it for some of you there's clutter around in some other way but that there is something very clear coming through it's quite specifically for some of you as a message wonderful friends um, this energy flow it's ready to move forwards it's ready to burst forth you you are on a much stronger foundation than you realize really you know the universe has your back I'm feeling like a strength rising um, very interesting as I tune into the calcites which are all about healing I also wish to bring this orange um, calcite in because it sort of completes a circle that's lovely lovely energy flow here now orange calcite brings um, vitality renewed life force um, to to any situation lovely flow of energy here now really really big shift compared to the way the cards were laid out um, yes big 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 respect and thank you um, yes to those who've been coming through in this reading actually to guide us so yeah I really thank you very very much um, for those messages that have been granted today 
my dear friends, um, so, so much love to you. It is time to embrace life force vitality. Um, the timing is right for you to emerge. So, so much love to you. Namaste. Welcome, wonderful friends, to a little bit of an extra. I have been preparing for my Sunday readings and we're going through such huge transformation and I'm very much tuning in today in meditation to the full moon, um, which will be overnight tonight. She will be exact. Um, I'm in the UK at 17 minutes past eight. If you're watching this in a year's time, <laughs> then my apologies, there'll be no reference point to this. But um, today I am in February of the year 2021. And what I was called for, for the extra guidance, was really to tune into the planets, the influence of the planets. And I thought um, I would actually make some planet stones. Um, for anyone who um, follows me and my channel, um, we did a lot of webinars during the last year, 2020, for this community because, I mean, you guys are amazing. This is a fabulous community of people. For anyone that's new, please feel free to join us. Um, we do all kinds of interesting things as well as readings. And we did a lovely workshop on making your own runes. And so today I am literally going to make my own planetary symbols. I was given these beautiful pebbles to make runes. There's still enough to make a full set of runes as well, but I hadn't yet used them. And just with a straightforward marker pen, I, I have been practicing and playing with different colors. I'm going to make a set of planetary stones, which I'm then going to use in this Sunday's reading. If we think about the planets as teachers, mentors, archetypal energies that bring us and gift us with learning, um, but learning at a level of, I don't know, evolution of the soul, then they really can be an amazing addition to a reading. And I know a lot of you read your own cards, you read your own runes. So I thought, you know, rather than looking for things that we have to buy, how about making some? So I'm just going to talk you through really my preparation and what I'm going to do. And then I look forward to, I hope, seeing you for the Sunday readings. Um, and indeed, I may tack this video on to the end. Now, the first thing I am going to do, I have actually picked out 12 um, stones. I've chosen stones that are going to sit in a flat way. If they're really perfectly round and they roll around, it's really difficult to then observe the symbols on them when you draw them out. They kind of, it's helpful if they can find a, a way of seating themselves. So that's what I've done um, in my choice of pebbles. I've practiced with some permanent markers, pro marker pens, and I have to say, actually, I am today just going to use black. That's my decision. I may decorate them at a later date with some other colors, but today I am just going to use black only. Now, if I move my, my other pebbles away, I'm going to cleanse them first. I have literally the end of a smudge stick here. Um, I burn a lot of sage, as you can probably tell. All of my readings, I always cleanse the space before I begin. Sage is amazing. This is white sage and sage literally cleanses it releases negativity so it really for me blesses the space i need to say please um if you are burning anything please do it safely i'm very mindful of putting something like this on youtube i always cleanse my space before i do a reading and if you're going to do anything like this it's a wonderful way of just engaging with the stones and thanking them actually you know if we consider in native traditions in shamanic traditions everything is living everything is alive and in fact science has told us that if you look through a strong enough microscope everything is energy we are energy these stones are energy and so you know i think we can think of stones as being you know the bones of the earth in many ways and so you know with real gratitude i i am grateful for their presence in my world today and for the fact that they will be contributing to our readings, to my readings. So I'm now going to also burn some sweet grass. 
Sweetgrass, um, whereas sage releases negativity, transforms negativity, sweetgrass actually, um, it literally invites positivity, it attracts positivity. They are a marvellous combination. And I think if we are going to be working with the energy of something, um, like the creation of a set of stones to use in harmony with our readings, they are a wonderful combination to bring into our space. Now, having chosen my stones, um, as I said, I want them to be able to sit flat in no specific order or size. I'm not looking for any planetary references visually. I'm going to use my black marker pen and I'm literally going to um, make make each of the planets and um, put a symbol an astrological symbol i think my first symbol i think is going to be i think i'm going to go with mercury as my first symbol here it's quite interesting having decided to do 12 i might actually do more i mean i will go away and have a ponder on this and indeed pick out more stones or more pebbles to do this but i'm quite inclined while i'm doing this to actually for example as i have mercury here i'm rather inclined to do a mercury retrograde as well actually in fact i think i will do that now it means i'm going to need to pick out some more stones because my initial 12 won't be enough these marker pens are fantastic because they're permanent i mean you you know, as far as I know, they're permanent. Anyway, these are permanent markers and they're very, very easy to use. I would really encourage you as well as when we did our rune making workshop, experiment, play, do whatever feels right for you. Use whatever medium you, you want to and, you know, unleash your creative expression. I put a little bit of an R down here and that will be my Mercury in retrograde stone. There we are. And I am inclined to actually do a little bit of decoration at some point. But for today, I am literally going to stay as I am um, and just stick with the black. I am now going to do a Saturn, I think. Have a look actually I need to put a little cross across my Saturn as well that's why I'm forgetting my symbols here we are there's our Saturn I think I'm going to now do Jupiter actually which is sort of the opposite of Saturn in a way you have the you have the the crescent and then sitting above the cross so we have that here there we go there's my Jupiter so wonderful people um i don't really need to do the whole lot um with you but you can get the gist of this i hope this will encourage you to be playful and to be creative there are no bounds to your creativity no limits or restrictions you could use a piece of cardboard or you could draw on a piece of paper and stick them onto a piece of cardboard to give yourself something a little more solid i'm going to complete my series of planets i'm going to do a whole series that are also in retrograde that's really called to me which i love actually because that's not what I started out with. I was just going to do the straightforward planets and now I am definitely going to do retrograde planets as well. Very interesting, I think, when we sit in a space of creativity and we allow our mind to wander freely and to discover where it may wish to go. I hadn't started out with that, but that's what I'm going to end up with. I'm definitely going to do retrogrades for all of the planets which is going to give me a lot more stones wonderful i shall put them in a bag and so my wonderful friends i look forward to seeing you with my full set of planetary stones which we will be drawing on for our sunday reading and no doubt they will show up in other sunday readings as well um, wonderful friends lastly but not leastly um, for anyone who's new to my channel to me um, thank you so so much for joining me for this and thank you guys who are already a part of this community if you are new, um, I have a monthly draw every every month. I offer a free private reading and I also give away a pack of the Art of Manifestation Oracle cards. It is a subscriber offer. If you would like to be um, in that draw, um, do please press subscribe, become a part of our amazing community and enter yourself in our subscriber, you know, add yourself to our subscriber email list. And I will put that in the information box below and in the comments. And guys, you know, yeah don't hold back be creative have a go there is no wrong or right in terms of the medium you use you could use paints you could use literally anything bits of cardboard pebbles stones 
anything that is durable enough to go into a bag and be drawn out and enhance the messages and the wisdom and the learning that come to our readings. Again, think of our, our the planetary influences as those great teachers of the universe, our mentors, our guides, bringing energy that helps us to evolve and to learn and to grow. Wonderful friends, um, thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, yeah, this is a little unexpected extra that I thought, rather than just do them on my own and put them into the readings, I thought, yeah, why not share this and see whether any of you guys feel like doing the same. Also, quick add-on, if you do, do send some photos through to us to the A to Z of Emotional Health Facebook page. Um, it'd be really, really lovely to publish them. When we did the runes, I mean, some of you guys made the most amazing sets of runes and we were able to put those, um, those photos and share those photos on our Facebook page. So do send them through if you find yourself inspired to do something and you start to work with your own planets, your own planetary, your own planets, your own planetary stones for your readings, do send them through. It's really, really lovely. And it's inspirational for others when they see the work that you are doing too. So much love to you all. Namaste.